mic check on you real quick. Check one, two. Check one, two. Happy Friday. Welcome to the Business Doctor. This is Chris, the Business Doctor, and I'm joined by the lovely Mercedes Carter. How are you, Mercedes? I'm great. How are you, Chris? Good. Happy Friday. I am. The weather's amazing today. Tomorrow is St. Patty's Day. It is. And there's a, what, a parade? On Greenville. Is that Lower Greenville? Yes, Lower Greenville, Upper Greenville, all of Greenville. You gotta, you gotta help me out. Of that. I think I haven't been in. Ten years. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, the parade, uh, I think it starts around maybe like eight or nine. Um, bring your favorite Irish whiskey and mm. walk down the street. <laughs> so you can bring your own. Yeah, UIOB. Really. So there, now there's a lot of bars. On the strip, yeah. So um, a lot of places like Twisted Root or formerly Naughty Naughty, um, they changed the name. I can't think of what it is called now. But um, so you pay maybe like five, ten dollars to get in, and then you either get, you know, your unlimited beer, or they have really uh, fun themed cocktails, maybe three, four dollars. So, uh, and Twisted Root has like five dollar uh, burgers. So, nice. so, what you're saying is I should go? Yes. yes. Okay. You're going to be there? Of course. Now, what happens if it rains? What do you do? Drink in the rain. <laughs> you, you keep going, right? Who cares? Drink yeah. it, right? Yeah. So, now, is the laws changed on St. Patty's Day? We can walk up and down the street with drinking. Um, I don't know what the rules are. I'm trying to make my own, uh, <laughs> but I know a lot of the parking lots, uh, by like CBS, uh, radio stations come and they set up their booths, and uh, SMU and uh, some of the fraternities would come over there to set up tables, beer pong. So it's a party. <laughs> nice. Okay. So if you were in Dallas. If you're listening now and you're in Dallas, and then check out Lower Greenville. Yep. It's all of Greenville, right? Starting at 75, uh, somewhere 675, 75. Yeah, so at Green Bay, there's around there. Okay. And it goes all the way down to like, uh, the Boulevard. So. Nice. Okay. So today's topic on the show what your doctor isn't telling you, mm-hmm. get more money. That's today's topic. Uh, so it's Today we're going to do we've got a segment, a new segment called Vice with Benz. <laughs> and uh, Mercedes, why don't you tell us what Vice with Benz is? So um, my name's Mercedes, and it's a play on my name Ben. And I love to eat; it's my favorite hobby. And um, my mom's always asking me, "Mercedes, where are you eating at?" Uh, which I go for brunch. That's the best spot with some of the, which I think my mom for her birthday. And I'm not a personal help, so I decided to share all of my favorite gems. And um, my favorite website, advisorfriends.com, it should be live by the end of the day. But um, I kind of gave uh, my food and other things to my Snapchat and Instagram. All right, so we're going to, Mercedes is going to talk about Bites and Friends. Um, we're going to talk about the topic, obviously, what your doctor isn't telling you to make more money. And then we're also we'll, we'll go through current news, what's happening in the world. Um, so that's the show today. So let's let's jump into what your doctor isn't telling you to make more money. So this is a thing, and it, this this goes right in to the last two episodes. So this is episode three. Um, so if you think about, about what your doctor isn't telling you, or first think about what your doctor is telling you, um, and then what are the things that you don't know behind the scenes in the business of medicine? Uh, so Monday or earlier in the week, I don't know, um, a really a person close to me um, was, was talking, and we were talking about the show uh, this weekend, something I was going to write about, and uh, a person said, here's this topic, you know. Um, and next day, I remembered the new show that you turned me on to Mercedes, the residents. Uh, yes. <laughs> and the residents, this, this was so fitting to this topic. Yeah. So if you haven't seen the resident 
on what is it, Fox Science. It's an amazing show. Um, and what I liked about it the most was it's it talked about the business of medicine. Yeah. And it kind of shows you what what doctors have to go through, many doctors, but hospital administration. Um, kind of decision points, and some of it's kind of scary, yeah. too, right? Um, and so when you think about you know, healthcare is such a, an interesting topic, anyway, from a, you know, it's a business first, but you know, doctors become doctors to help people um, you know, save lives and improve quality of life, and they, they practice medicine, right? It's, it's a constant, it's what they call practicing medicine, because it's a lot of trial and error. And what I liked about the resident was it, it really, Kind of pulled some some hard strings, you know. What what do you do when you're faced with someone with cancer? Um, you know, like my mother, um, and like many people who go through it, and then for someone who didn't have insurance, and so there's a cost of that hospital, right? And so that's a decision that has to be made. And I love that that one episode. The doctors still found a way um, to treat the the patient because that's was their mindset first, right, which is what it should be. Uh, but then you, you do have to recognize the business side. Yeah. And in that example on the show, it, it cost I think the hospital it was probably yeah, two million dollars. And if, if, if the hospital does that every day for everyone, the hospital's not gonna the hospital's gonna go out of business yeah. and no one's gonna get treated. So it brought this thing um, and it, it made me think about you know, in this topic, so what your doctor isn't telling you yeah. uh, to make more money. So there's three things that uh, your doctor isn't telling you to make more money. Um, we're going to start with so number one is ambulatory surgery centers. I talked a little bit about this last week, and most providers who do a procedure or some type of procedure, um, hopefully they, they do have ownership and to the surgery center. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing evil about that. So everyone needs to understand that, that it's okay. Um, but you may not know that. Um, you know, that may be buried into some uh, paperwork that's, that's telling you um, that there's some financial interest, but the doctor doesn't have to disclose it. It has to be disclosed that they have a financial interest in it. Um, so why, why is this a topic? It's okay, Chris, right? You're, you're saying it's fine. Um, why is this number one on or part of the reason as to why we're doctors not telling you to make more money? And that is maybe that surgery center where they should suggest you're saying you're going to go to might not be the lowest cost for you. Um, you know, so there's there's a thing where you got to look at it. You hope it's for the best, right? And so the doctors not going to steer you wrong. Yeah. Um, but what you don't know is they own it or have some ownership into it. And it might be more expensive for you if they go to somewhere else. Yeah. Um, a good provider, so for doctors listening, um, you should be credentialed at least three surgery centers um, for your own self and for diversity, but also to give your patients um, you know, potential cost alternatives because it may, may not be um, the least expensive in that surgery center. Um, so that's what your doctor isn't telling you. So they can make more money on that. Look, if, if that surgery center does well and makes money that month, it's five doctors that own part of that surgery center. They're making money on the side that they have for you. Then they're making money on this surgery center, which is fine. Yeah. Um, and I think like the common belief among patients is if, if there might just be one cost or one price for um, every procedure or every test. They don't know that if they were to go to a different surgery center, they can save a couple thousand dollars. So I think it also goes back to the patient and um, taking the responsibility into their own hands to uh, what you require the cost and see if there is anything that we can do. So a lot of the time, we're like, oh, just healthcare. Um, you know, there's probably not a cheaper option if all it's not So yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, it is. But so here's the here's what happened. So last year, I had to I, I'd have a surgery. And I decided that ultimately in the end that I wanted my doctor to do it. I didn't want to go to another doctor, but you know, they, they tell me that there was 
there's two locations, two different surgery centers that, that I could have thought that I could go to. And so the doctor was, was predicting at both those centers. So, um, so everyone knows your, your doctor uh, to do a procedure at a facility has to be credential with that facility. So the facility goes through, does a background check, and credential, et cetera. Um, and then if they are able to offer capital equity uh, to the provider, then to the doctor, they um, That's how the doctor then buys into that center. Um, so they give me two options. And um, I, so my first decision point was, okay, is it better for me to go through insurance or pay out of pocket? So something everyone needs to understand and look at. And one of the things we're going to do, put onto the website at medicinesbusinessexpert.com, is a calculator for you. So one of the things I had to consider was my deductible, I think, was three or $4,000. So until the deductible was met, I hadn't met anything of it yet, right? So I was going to have to pay the full out of pocket to the deductible. So I wanted to find out how the cash pay price. And usually the cash pay price is lower than what they will build the insurance for. So when you have a procedure done, you've got the surgery center billing, and then you've got the doctor. They're also billing for it. So it's called the professional component and then the technical part of the facility. Yeah. Um, so my first thing was, and this is what I recommend to everyone, um, and I'll, I think I'll create a calculator for people to, to go to the website and download it and do this. Because just because you have insurance doesn't mean you always need to go through insurance. Okay. Important point to make because the company does not have insurance, just builds that. And then I'm always going to come out with the least amount to pay out of pocket. Exactly. And, and that may not be the case. So if the cash pay price is, is lower than what your out of pocket cost, which might be for you have measured up, especially at the beginning of the year, then you should consider whether or not you have the cash. So they give me the two locations, so I call them. Um, here's a couple of things that you need to know when you're calling a surgery center or a hospital. Number one, you're going to need to find out what the CPT code is. So the CPT code is what identifies the procedure. Then, um, if you're going to go under anesthesia, it doesn't matter if it's general, local, et cetera, um, you're going to need to know the minutes. So when you were talking to your doctor about the procedure you're going to have, you need to ask them, what is the CPT code, the procedure you're doing, um, and how much time they're going to be in, in surgery. And so that's what the surgery center will, will look at. So we call the surgery center. You're going to ask them what their cash pay price is. And you're going to, they're going to ask you for the CPT code and for how long. Um, and so they're going to see this building in 15 minutes. And so that's why you know how long it's going to be there. See that. And then surgery centers charge um, for that block time for that room. So you're going to get the cash pay price. And then you'll be able to look at it and say, is this lower cost or lower out of pocket than what my doctor said? And so anyways, so I, I call both locations and and, um, and I get the, the cash pay price and then what the insurance price is to put it in the bill. So one thing that, that you need to understand and know is that whenever a provider bills the insurance, that's the book charge. That charge can be anything. It's a made up number, okay? Um, hopefully it's not made up, um, but um, if you if you're in the one. Um, so it may not be a made up number, but the provider can bill for whatever they want. So that's what the provider is saying is this is my charge, um, what I think that it's, it's worth. Um, and you want to see that it's hopefully uh, the same, right? I mean, they're consistent locations and also whether or not um, the surgery center is going to be less costly to you and to the insurance company than what a hospital is. Um, anyway, so I get the price for the insurance um, and my out of pocket cash price. And I'm like, this is still expensive. So I start calling my Google and I start calling a few other surgery centers. So what, what surprised me the most was the disparity between the gross charge, so what the providers are billing. So 
one center was was billing a thousand dollars and one was billing like ten thousand. Oh, wow. So one of the things, so let's let's go over the first charge. Then there's the allowable amount. So you have a build amount, which requires billing. Then you have the allowable. And that allowable is what the contracted rate is with the insurance company. So the insurance company can say, hey, you're going to build whatever you want, but here's the allowed rate that will allow it. And then you get the product before you pay. So if they bill 1000 the insurance allows 500 right? And then you have a 80% 20 plan, let's say. 80% insurance coverage, 20% you. The, uh, they're going to get paid 80% of their 500 and the balance is left over to you. Yeah. Um, so that's going to help the build allowed and pay for um, But anyways, I'm sitting there and I'm going, wait a minute, why is it so expensive here and less costly there? Yeah. And it's not talking about the term of the buyer, right? It's the facility, so I really don't care where I have it. Um, I knew that I wanted my doctor to do it, so I called my doctor and I said, hey, I found two other locations that are less costly for me uh, than the two that, that you're telling me that, that you're licensed or credential to go to. Yeah. I'd like you to get credential at these locations um, because they're, they're less costly. Yeah. And of course the answer was no. And the reason why it was no is and what the doctor isn't telling you to make more money. Number one, and there is a process to credential now because I do what I do because I know what I know. I offered to do a credential for them. I'm like, look, I'll take care of it for you. Don't worry about it. Um, but the provider <clears throat> didn't have ownership in those two locations, right? The other two. So that wasn't the best for me. Um, and so that's what the doctor isn't telling you um, to make more money. And so, you know, that's something you can have a conversation with the doctor about. Hey, can you get credential at the two facilities? Um, but definitely, you need to ask, ask do you have ownership in the facility? Um, we're going to take a quick break. Um, we come back, we'll, we'll go through the next two topics, um, but we'll be right back to listen to the business.
laboratory, let's say it's a um, pharmacy, compound pharmacy, it doesn't matter. Um, it may not be you know, best for you. There may be other cost effective um, places or methods for you. And so you should ask the doctor. So the first thing you should ask in any of these things is number one, just ask the provider, the doctor, do you have a financial interest into this company, right? Um, or the other healthcare provider or the surgery center, whatever it is, you have a financial interest in it. I think it's important um, to know that. Um, you know, and it may help you make decisions out, but there's nothing wrong with asking the doctor if there's a more cost effective um, treatment plan or treatment option for you. And um, usually whenever you get your prescription, you can ask for an alternative because there's always the main brand one and the generic. And I find those entries are the exact same thing. One. Yeah, so um, in, in, in any doctor's office, um, if you've seen this, you know, about, there's always, you should, you'll always see um, some very good looking uh, man or woman right, coming in with a uh, suitcase, right? So carrying in. Um, and those are uh, distributors. So they can either be independent reps, distributors. Um, or they can work for uh, the company, right? Um, so it's it known as pharma reps. Um, great industry, great job uh, for those people have. But so what are they doing? Well, they're there to promote to the doctor that drug, and they want the doctor to prescribe their drug, right? So um, they come in almost daily, and they're bringing lunches, and they're educating the doctor on whatever drug is that they have, and they're basically promoting that drug. So there's nothing wrong with whenever your doctor you know, says, hey, you're not feeling well today, okay, um, whatever it is, and they're going to try to do something. It's, there's nothing wrong with talking to the doctor um, about more treatment options and are there other drugs out there um, that may be less costly to you, uh, so more cost effective. Um, it may be better. Now, there's a test that you can have done called pharmacogenomics or PGX. And a PGX test will tell you um, what your body metabolizes the best. So if this drug is working at its best or not, the PGX test is very expensive. Um, so that's one of those where if you have insurance, then get it, but it is going to cost quite a bit. So um, hopefully you're not close to that by the time you're doing it. But, there's nothing wrong with having a conversation with your doctor. Yeah. Why are you? Why this drug? Is there a better option treatment plan for me? You know, here's what's worked in the past, and so forth. Yeah. Um, don't always. You don't always have to just go with what the doctor says. Um, for the first one, right? It doesn't always have to be just that that particular uh, drug or that location. It's easier to talk about the the prescription of drug that you're going to get yeah. than get the doctor credential in a different. So you're in a hospital, right? Yeah. But you're still not along with them in the conversation. And I think a lot of doctors, um, well, at least the ones I've been to, um, they don't go in and offer you multiple treatment plans. It's up to the patient to, you know, say, I don't want this, or this part of your treatment plan makes me uncomfortable. Is there something else that we could do? It takes, you know, something, or having that conversation or asking that question to open up, you know, the treatment options. There's always multiple. So um, maybe a physician would just go in and you know go with you know, A, B, and C and see what their uh, patient likes because not every um, patient's the same and not every physician is always all the way uh, just okay. so, yeah exactly. Uh, so have you have you had that happen uh, before Mercedes? Have you talked to the doctor? Every time I go to the doctor, they don't necessarily like me because. I'm the patient who um, kind of objects to everything they say. And not so much object, but I know there are other options because I work in healthcare. And um, I want to know all of my options before just going for I know one. So even if uh, I have been in the original hospital, my grandmother was actually um, in the hospital last week and immediately called my dad. I was like, okay, what are they doing? What medicines are they giving her? Are you, you know, asking this question to the doctor in the room? Nurse in the room. Um, it doesn't have to fill it, but it makes a difference. If the, the doctor was administering the medicine, or if the nurse participated, then 
and you can see the differences um, when you get built. So yeah, it's exactly. really important. Now, do you find that you know so I'm encouraging people to have that conversation? Do you find that the doctor is you know, you're you're not at the hospitals, so it's different, but your your doctor that you see weekly or, or monthly or whatever, you know, yeah. your doctor, etc. Is that doctor open to conversation with you? They are. Um, I first met my uncle for my medical um, needs, and um, but sometimes if he's not available, I'll put in his colleague or whoever's in the office. And um, they are very open. I think they like having someone who wants to engage in conversation because a lot of their day is okay. I uh, what are your symptoms? Okay, they check off you know their boxes. And, you know, could be this random this test, and patients just follow blindly. So it's probably refreshing to have somebody in the office who's like, hey, what about this? Is there this? Like an article about you know stuff, things like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we just went. I just we just turned on the live feed on Facebook. Um, that's a business doctor page. It's up on my personal page. Um, so if you are on Facebook, or you want to head to Facebook. Um, you can watch the live piece of it and um, see which is left than I am. Um, but you can see us here in the studio um, on Facebook. It's Ad Medicines Business Expert. Um, you find the we search for the business doctor, and then my, my personal page is Star Health at Star Health Chris. Um, I think, um, I'm not really sure, uh, but you can check out and see the live there, and then you can also go to fishbowlradio.com, and you should see a pop up right there on the blue screen of uh, fishbowlradio.com or fbrn.us. Um, also. Call into the show if you have any questions you want to talk about or tell us about you love the doctor. Call us at 214-431-5062. Again, 214-431-5062. So the third thing that um, we're going to talk about and what your doctor isn't telling you to make more money is something known as upcoding. So we talk about the code. There's the, the procedure code, CBT code. That was um, on the right. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's an episode, it's within the first five or six episodes on the resident that, that kind of talks about this. And um, every doctor is, is going to, has to go to this uh, what, training class, you know, educational class, or whatever, um, on the show on the resident. And what was interesting was, the, so you've got this billing consultant or revenue cycle. Uh, you know, you're going through the doctor, and um, it's about how do you bill more, right? So your buildings aren't up, right? That means revenue is lower. So if someone has a headache and um, they need a, you know, maybe an X-ray, MRI, CT, what 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 they're saying is what what coding is. Hey, if the patient qualifies as medically necessary to get the CT scan or the CAT scan, when you no MRI would justify it. Yeah. Order the CT scan, right? Yeah. Um, and and you as a patient, right? If you're in the hospital or, or hell, anytime, right? Your your first thing is not how much is this going to cost me. And I'm telling you, it should be. Now, no, I'm not going to say uh, you know, and never, never let that uh, that be a reason why you don't get something done. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's important though that that you talk about it, right? At least. Um, and no, and the first thought should be, you know, how much is this going to cost me? Is it actually necessary? So um, I gave the example, uh, I think last show or maybe on the, the first show, when I took my son to the doctor, right? Um, you know, they wanted to order a flu test, rep test, and I'm like, why? You know, uh, but when something else may be okay, um, you know, doctors will go, they're trying to get the billing in uh, as much as and when there is another alternative that's more cost effective. Yeah. And you may not know that. And so that, that's why, um, you know, that's a, I guess it's a third thing that what your doctor isn't telling you to make more money um, is, is they could be going for something that, you know, while it may be technically medically necessary, yeah. there might be a cost alternative. Um, have you ever had that happen? Well, funny story, one of my healthcare economics professors at ETD, she was telling us a 
story about uh, she took her younger kids in. Uh, they had the flu, both of them, <laughs> and, and uh, well, they ended up getting it. And she was looking over her bill, and a box of tissues. Because how much? What would you put for a price? Uh, you know, a box of tissues at, um, at the grocery. You know, it might be a few bucks. Yeah. You know, if you get the brand name, I don't know. I guess five bucks. I would say no yeah. more than five bucks for a box of tissues. So the hospital, you could expect this cool hundred dollars for a box of tissues. And you would never know that otherwise than looking at your um, bill. So go to the hospital, bring your own tissues. Nice. <laughs> so I'm, I'm pulling, I'm searching this right now. Um, Uline is a distributor of manufacturer of clothing and healthcare. Yeah. Um, and, and all kinds of other uh, things. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking. So here's it at Walmart. What a bestseller is uh, Puffs Plus Lotion Facial Tissues. Three family boxes, 124 tissues per box, $4.47. Okay. Now, at Uline, there is the, the Uline Deluxe facial tissue that boasts um, 100 um, sheets per box, so lower. Now, boxes per case, it says 36, so you're going to have to do the math on this real quick. Uh, so, 36, um, and this is for, let's see, this may actually be cheaper. I'm not sure. It's not the price. Seventy-five dollars. So seventy-five divided by thirty-six. Uh, what you got? I have two point two. All right. So so two dollars worth of box. Now I'll take that divide it by a hundred. Because your line is on hundred sheets. So that'll get us the price per sheet. Um, about two cents a sheet. Okay. So Walmart's uh, there it is. Let's see. Four dollars and forty-seven cents divided by four point three. So they're close to the same price. Uh, but so that goes back to what we were talking about earlier, the growth chart, right? So they're billing for uh, tissue, and it's like you get medicine. You know, any pills or shots while you're in the hospital. Holy crap. Yeah. I mean, it's expensive, right? And I, when I was in the hospital, I remember that I have no pain. I have dog medicine. And fun fact, if you would talk to me, you know, I hate pills. So yeah. don't bring me any of that. Um, so, well, I still talk to your doctor, okay, um, about the, you know, treatment, right? And I'm not saying that don't this is my treatment. Um, and something important, um, you know, the, the disclaimer here, you know, medical and other information that, that we talked about is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease or any medical condition of abuse. And if anything's expressed here, are those of um, the authors? Um, do not necessarily affect the official policy to your um, position with any company or agency of the U.S. government. Um, so, so like your doctor, but you as cost as a, as a thing we talked about. Um, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to uh, talk about going into the fights with Benz. Um, and then we'll talk about some current uh, these stories going on in the U.S. Are we at war? We're going to go to war with North Korea. Um, you know, we'll find out. Uh, next, you'll listen to the business doctor on the full radio network.
I forgot. I need to record a new intro and put the disclaimer. Okay. Before we go on, if you want, we can just make a disclaimer. What? Like just record a disclaimer. Like you don't need to put it in the. Uh, or yeah, I guess yeah. I guess you can put it in the intro because that's that's the promo. You're not talking about what we already have. Made, right? No, I mean, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll put a recorded new intro. Okay. And put that. I'll just add that in the intro. Okay, cool. Did you want to record here? Yeah. 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 You already have a script to download? Yeah. Okay, awesome. What time are we going over? About 37 or about, actually, I might give you the exact time. At 38, close to 39 after the hour, 15 seconds before. We'll go back on at 42. So, yeah, 60 seconds, then five of them. And then what time do we end? 53. Yeah. That's about the time you start wrapping up. Okay. Are we going to do music behind the voice again? Yeah. Okay. Um, Two minutes. Three, two. Hey, we're back. We're back on the business doctor. This is first business doctor going by the logo series. Okay. So um let's let's talk about bites with Ben. What is bites with Ben? Bites with Ben is my personal food blog. Um it's kind of my version of Yelp, so um that's how I designed it at least. So go to Bitesofbents.com, which is now live, <laughs> and you click Let's Eat, and it jumps down, so it asks for food. Uh, personally, I think the hardest decision of the day is deciding what I want to eat. I know there are plenty of uh, food places in Dallas with awesome patios and um, good food and drinks, but it all sides goes down to what do I actually feel like eating, so I just made a nice little hub for all of my pictures. All right, so Bites with them. Dot com, and that's like the Mercedes Benz, yeah. right? So B and Z, yeah. the bites with Benz. Yeah. So, uh, what's your favorite favorite um, cuisine? Yeah, so I'm a part time vegan, <laughs> and I say part time yeah. because my favorite is steak. There's nothing better than good steak. Oscar salad. There's also nothing vegan about steak. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's your favorite. So I budget. The side. This looks amazing, by the way. Um, she did this herself, too, by the way. Okay. Um, so if you check out bitesofbenz.com, you'll see it, and it looks fantastic. Um, Thank you. Uh, so you've got on here, so the mood, so a hard decision today, day, picking deciding what to eat. Um, you've got Asian cuisine, brunch me baby, clean eating, um, great Italian, island inspired, so forth. Uh, what's clean eating? So uh, kind of healthier food option. Um, I put some really good salads. I won't eat a salad if I'm not going to get a whole outfit. It just seems pointless. But there's some really amazing salads that I found in Dallas, and I even included a um, few of the vegan restaurants. I'll give you the but there's a uh, Bee Eats on there, so yeah, uh, vegan restaurants are fun. Uh, <laughs> at least the ones in Dallas, they really try to make the food just as <laughs> yeah. So is that so for the TV? Is that what you would eat like tofu? So you'll have to do tofu. It's not only tofu. Um, cheese you can make out of cashews, fun fact. Okay. And um, a lot of them are just really soy based. Um, there's also seitan, which is similar to tofu, but it just has a different texture. Um, I personally prefer that over tofu. Because tofu is very squishy and slimy and 
no matter how much you deep fry it, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's still slimy. So, yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah. So, who, who, um, I don't know. 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 Clicked on boom, um, eating, and then I see bananas and strawberries, which are eating a salad. It's one of the unbelievable. So, um, if I click on one of the pictures, it, it takes me, and so this even tells me where, yeah. So, here I click on one, um, we got like a leak up, full spot next to the Arcadia and Maxim Horse area. Uh, this says this is your code to, <clears throat> yeah, uh, go to killing and Dressing is to my awesome. Awesome. Nice. Uh, so, Moxie, because you've got, um, I live pretty close to Moxie, uh, walking distance. Yeah. Moxie's um, in, in uptown. Um, but I, I don't think I've ever eaten their, their salad there. So, you've got up here what uh, salmon and avocado oh, wow. salad. Not even the same. But lately, I told you right yesterday. Yeah. All I've been eating is healthy, clean food. Yeah. So this gives me some options here to look at. Inspired. Um, if I'm not sure what I want to eat, go deep, and I can go check out your site. Yeah. They're always honest opinions, and I don't just post just like if I'm about to eat and I didn't like the food, I'm probably not going to post it because I think what kind of dilutes a lot of the um, well, at least because that's the only food I have to use, but uh, at least. You don't know if it's actually good or if this looks good, so uh, safe space for food on the website. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Now, are people, are you, are people going to be able to comment on on anything like it? Um, I see yeah, so, like it. Yeah, um, each picture there's a, an option to like it with the heart. I'm going to add a comment section. Um, Probably it won't. The comments won't be visible to the public, but just you know, for my own input, just to let people know if okay. they like something gotcha. or you know, suggestion. Gotcha. Um, what about address? Are you gonna put address of the places? Um, I'm gonna hope that people know how to use their yeah. Google Maps app. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully, um, if there were multiple locations of a place, I probably specified it in my little blurb that I okay. wrote about it. So I've, yeah, I was about like, to ask. Yeah, okay. so do you have uh, pictures of food or, or things on here from that wasn't in Dallas? No, but I was going to add uh, a travel section because I've had some amazing food. Um, obviously, not in Dallas. <laughs> yeah, so one of my challenges, um, um, you know, in traveling a lot, I've been travel in a while, you know, a lot like we used to, but um, is eating. Healthy you know, travel, especially if you're in a hotel um, and whatnot. So I think that would be really neat yeah. to have something like a travel so that you can have a go-to place to look at different things. So maybe here, if I like this, um, which I really like this, uh, like this, what is it? The blue. Yeah. So the blue cheese is better. Um, so the cold is better. Um, <laughs> but like you know, anywhere you go, right? You could Probably have them make a variation of that. Yeah. So much to put in it, ask them to put in it. Um, and so that would be really neat, right? Really cool. Traveling, where you're going, here's some cool spots that you've been to because you, you like to travel. Um, so, yeah, that would be really neat. Um, yeah, I really like this. So, let me ask this. So, for Asian cuisine, where is a good spot in Dallas um, to go to for Asian cuisine? Because it can be catchy. Right, it's it's kind of you know like uh, Payway is pretty close to me, yeah. um, and it's like uh, not like not Payway, but, but yeah. you know it might not be the first choice. Um, and I feel like it's you know, is, there, is there a difference between Chinese restaurants and then Asian cuisine, right? Yeah. Um, but where you go is is important, right? So it's like a hamburger you can't really screw up, but uh, Asian food. Could be screwed up, right? Like you got it, or fried chicken. Like it's pretty yeah. hard to screw up fried chicken. Um, so most places, right, are going to get that right. But yeah. I feel like Asian cuisine, you you got to go to a place that trust it. it's going to be good. So where's 
Um, well, if you're looking for something cheap and quick, Denna's downtown for sure. Uh, but they don't always roll their so there's some cheap uh, super try, which is not because they just end up with rice and seaweed in the end. It's not fun. Um, good ramen, 10 ramen uh, by Sylvan Avenue and Wabi House. Awesome, sensational. Like they have these uh, deep fried corn fritters that are to die. Cool. Hey, where's that? Um, on Greenville. So lower Greenville, kind of by like HD supply. Um, one butcher truck yard. Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, all right, awesome. So, where can everyone go to check out Bites with Bins? You can go to biteswithbins.com. And that will uh, direct you to all my other platforms uh, on Instagram and on Twitter. So. Awesome. Um, all right, so let's talk about some current trending news. Um, and we're doing this and we'll. Uh, wrap up the, the show. Uh, so two days ago, uh, theoretical business Stephen Hawking passed away um, March 14th uh, in the UK. Uh, Stephen was born in what, 1942. Um, and I think it was he had came down whatever got he was diagnosed with uh, was a uh, disease. And so that's why he was was in a wheelchair. Um, and I, I heard the other day that he uh, uh, he was only given like two years to live. The doctor said you're only going to live for two years. Um, he ended up living for 20 plus years uh, from that. Uh, and so he, you know, the family I was hearing was talking about that he was he got pretty you know down obviously when he was uh, diagnosed with ALS. Um, and and then he realized and said, hey, I've got this gift um, that I need to share. Share with the world, so regardless of my uh, of this disease, I'm not going to hold me back. Um, and and so he did. So pretty sad um, thing for for the passing. Um, I know a lot of people are you know thinking of both him and the family. Yeah. Um, legal immigrants uh, is popped up with acquitted and the uh, case only case. Um, they say case only. You know who was. Uh, in San Francisco a few years ago. Oh, wow. um, so he was acquitted um, in, in the sign of killing. Um, he was the federal government of that big prosecution. Um, what else uh, um, is current trending in the news? Uh, oh, the break in Miami. Yeah, so what happened with that? Apparently, they built a new. Pedestrian crosswalk bridge, and the other day it collapsed. Uh, four people died, unfortunately. But, um, wow. Oh, yeah, uh, at least six dead. Uh, it was well. Now it's up to six, it was four. Um, uh, at least six. At, uh, it was the bridge collapse at the university. I mean, wow. That's that sucks. Uh, well, I hope everyone else is okay for mine. Um, so, anyways, uh, tomorrow, St. Patty's Day. Um, Rainbow Avenue in Dallas. Weather is amazing today, so get out, enjoy it. Um, and we'll post out today, uh, hopefully, the, the bond, uh, the show because I did not do it this week after Monday. Um, so we'll put that out there. Um, again, check out Mercedes' um, food blog at bikeswithbusiness.com. And check out the business doctor site, uh, medicinebusinessexpert.com. We'll get out there today or we can uh, calculate to help you make decisions um, from a health cost perspective on whether or not it's going to pay cash or go through insurance. Um, and then we'll be back next Friday, right? Uh, right back here. Um, so, hey, anything you want to say? Um, drink water tomorrow. Drink a lot of water. Drink whiskey water. Yeah, it's drink a lot of, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> drink, drink water. Um, um, thanks for tuning in today. Or listen to the Dr. Fishbowl Radio Network. Okay. <laughs>